Donald John Trump was born in the Jamaica Hospital, Queens, New York City on June 14, 1946 at 10.54 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. About a year later, on October 31, 1947, New York City was turned over to the United Nations along with all of its people. All of New York City, not just the UN complex in Manhattan. The United Nations Headquarters District is the complete and whole of New York City along with all of its people. For more information about the takeover of New York City by the United Nations, see Episode 4, United Nations, the fourth sovereign city-state of New York City. It's up there with the Vatican City, the City of London, and the City of Washington, D.C. Just as Washington, D.C. is not a part of the United States, neither is New York City. Both D.C. and New York City issue their own birth certificates separate from the states and outside of the United States. Donald Trump was born in New York City and has a New York City birth certificate. Donald is not a U.S. citizen. He is a United Nations international resident and technically isn't eligible for U.S. presidency, just as D.C. residents aren't eligible for U.S. presidency either. Trump is only eligible for presidency using outdated definitions of the United States and the United Nations. If the United States eliminated the United Nations and annexed all New York City residents, then and only then would Trump be eligible for presidency. Besides that, there is a second important point. How his campaign was funded has a glaring anomaly that needs addressing. Let's follow the money. His campaign spent approximately $322 million, and some statistics say more. The majority was funded through donations, and about $18.5 million was from his own accounts. The remaining $47.5 million was self-funded with loans. This is the important portion. What self-funding means is that Trump worked with the bankers to create $47 million from nothing by loaning it into existence. Trump merely needed to prove that he could eventually pay it back. The $47 million that Trump loaned his campaign did not exist before the loan. It was his signature that created the money as a loan issued by the New York City bankers. Remember, debt is legally money. It was not Donald's own money that he loaned his campaign, it was the bankers' money created from thin air. Donald himself brags that he is the king of debt. What are some of the first steps, the message that you begin to send forth to empower yourself and to begin that transition? Well, first of all, you mentioned the word debt. And nobody knows more about debt than I do, because I owe billions and billions of dollars. But I'm a professional. I mean, I know what I'm doing, and it worked out very well. I negotiated a couple of deals with banks and this and that. But you know, I had a lot of friends who went bankrupt. You'll never hear from them again. I never did that in the early 90s when I was in trouble. I owed billions and billions of dollars. And in a certain way, I love debt, because in good times, there's nothing better than debt. In bad times, it comes back to bite you. So. We talk about debt, we talk about the assets and the liabilities of debt, and generally speaking, it's a liability, especially if you're not a really skilled professional. Donald then canceled the loan to his campaign after it was spent so as to not need to pay the bankers back. Donald Trump literally bought the presidency for nothing. The New York City bankers underwrote Trump's campaign with new debt money created from nothing. The bankers are complicit in the debt is money scheme used by Donald. New York City banks are United Nations international banks. They are not U.S.-based banks, and they have no reserve requirements. The New York City banks are allowed to create any amount of debt that they want for them and their friends, particularly the New York Federal Reserve. This self-funding with new debt money created by loans is not unique to Donald Trump. Many prominent Democrats and Republicans, such as Hillary Clinton and Mitt Romney, use this debt loan money trick when they need more campaign cash. The bankers support such schemes because they profit immensely by rehypothecating the credit as an asset for their own profits regardless of cancellation. The banks don't have any skin in the game for any loan that they make. The International Monetary Fund, Bank for International Settlements, and the City of London operate the debt as money franchise which permits zero reserve ratios for the creation of new debt money by loans. Furthermore, the Trump empire was the subcontractor for various services for his campaign. In essence, paying himself the money that the bankers created from loans. Trump personally profited from running his campaign as a business, giving himself the money created from thin air to buy the presidency. And this is all completely legal for any candidate to loan their campaign money from nothing and then cancel it. Debt is speech, according to Citizens United versus the Federal Election Commission. Trump merely used his First Amendment speech to create debt speech. You also have the right to loan yourself debt from nothing and then not pay it back. It's a constitutionally protected First Amendment right to create debt speech. It seems to be the only real speech that is truly protected by the First Amendment of the Constitution. 
The corporations pretending to be governments and countries are required to accept it by virtue of it being our protected right. It's how Donald Trump bought the presidency for nothing, and even paid himself to do it. If Trump can loan himself debt money to buy the presidency and then cancel the loan, it's certainly good enough for the rest of us to do as well. If it's legal for Donald to create debt to pay his bills, so can we. First Amendment debt speech is something we can and should be exercising. And lastly, a rat fact. Freemason Doc Marquis claims that Donald Trump is a third-degree Freemason and used his Masonic connections to build his empire on the cheap with his Masonic discount. Hillary Clinton called you the king of debt. Well, no, she didn't call me. I call myself the king of debt. I'm the king of debt. I'm great with debt. Nobody knows debt better than me. I've made a fortune by using debt. And if things don't work out, I renegotiate the debt. I mean, that's a smart thing, not a stupid thing. And I made a fortune. How do you renegotiate the debt? Because you go back and you say, hey, guess what? The economy just crashed. I'm going to give you back half. I like debt for me. I don't like debt for the country. I like debt for my company. But I don't like debt for the country. For the country, we have $19 trillion in debt. It's going to be very soon $21 trillion, not billion, $21 trillion in debt. And I will tell you, we are sitting on a time bomb. We are sitting on a time bomb. We are sitting on a time bomb. And like, subscribe, and notify.